When I was a physician associate student, there were many times I would go home from placement with no desire to read a single book. I knew I had to study, but from the duration of the journey to the hunger in my stomach, the last thing I wanted to learn about was nephrotic syndrome. The problem is, regardless of my excuses, the reading needed to be done. I was building a backlog of all manner of conditions with every passing period. The senior citizens always tell us, strike the iron while it's still hot. The way things were going, I knew I had to figure something out. Either I astral projected like Dr. Strange, or I could just resign and die on Everest. A long list of things to do. Occasionally I'll find some routine to help me sort out this mess I had gotten myself into through intermittent bouts of motivation. But there was actually no proven method to help me unschlung myself. Like many in this limbo, I had a gazillion ton of energy for every unimportant thing in my life. I procrastinated as if I was getting paid for it. I played all kinds of games, Ages of Empire, I played a lot of that, binge watched all manner of movies on Netflix. At the back of my mind, I knew this was definitely not the way forward. But the magnitude of how far I had fallen behind did not dawn on me till I actually sat down and wrote them down. When I saw the hail of tasks that needed doing with no horizon in sight, the only thing I could think of was sempre caro mi fucusto ermo colle e questa siepe che da tanta parte dell'ultimo orizzonte il guardo esclude ma sedendo e mirando in terminati spazi di là da quella sovra umani silenzi e profondissimi quete io nel mio pensier mi fingo over per poco il corno si spaura. It felt like an infinity to me. But as they say, knowing the problem is half the battle. I was not doing too bad. I began making timetables for my time post placement. I was going to eat at this time, I was going to do this, I was going to read for an hour. And to be honest, for a week or two, I was on track. I was moving the proverbial needle as they say. But for one reason or the other, I don't really know why, everything would go downhill again. The wind blowing in my sail will cease to blow. That is when I came to the realization that motivation is a myth. That is, if I were to rely on how I felt to do what needed to be done, either the thing would not be done at all or it would take forever. And clearly, these are not the best of options. Like anyone wanting to improve their productivity, I became acquainted with the YouTube productivity bros. I think it was really James Clare's book, Atomic Habits, and the one Darren Hart the compound effect that I found particularly useful. What I took out basically was this. What I needed as a physician and social student was discipline and consistency. Basically, showing up regardless of how I felt. This did not mean the things I had to do will not suck. They still suck, but at least the job was getting done and I was conquering Everest one step at a time. Gradually, I began to have time after placement. I was able to go to the gym and still read up on all the nephrotic syndrome, dementia, Crohn's, whatever. I was laying down the building blocks, the track record I could turn to and I found myself at the bottom again. The truth is, a change in mindset, I'm going to be disciplined, I'm going to be consistent, does not preclude the onslaught of setbacks. However, they do impact how you confront them. This is because the things that befall a person are less a reflection of the individual's character and how he handles. It's like a child learning to walk. Falling is just part and parcel of the process. But the important thing is that he or she stands up again and tries to walk again. This time. This time. What I'm trying to say is, even if you were a diligent, hard-working physician associate student, you'll have your dips. But when you have your dip, don't let it define you. Did an assignment, it did not go well. You went to placement, met some not so pleasant individual, total disrespect, don't let that define you. The only things you can control are the human. What that is, Umar and Clark, McLeod, Coltran, Physiology, Biochemistry, whatever that you need to do so that at the end of the day you can go see the pain exams and become a physician associate. Those are the things you can control. Anything else that comes in is a distraction. Stick with the plan. There is no one coming to save you. Like Sisyphus, the rock is not going up without your effort. You have to push it. And even if it comes down, you go back to the bottom and you push it up again. That is all lot. That's what I do. Huh? Is it if you want to learn more about physician associates, click on this video. If you want to understand why you procrastinate and how you could tackle it, click on this video. It's your boy OT and I'm out. Salute!